Yay Networks. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Fittish Podcast. Yes, you're right. We are still in the States. We are. For now. For now. Next week, we'll be coming to you with a new episode from uh, Mexico, actually. Somewhere in Mexico. We're going to be on the road, uh, house hunting, House Hunters International. So we'll bring you behind the scenes on that. Hopefully, that'll provide some interesting content. We may not may not have the video on YouTube, but we'll, you know, TBD. We'll try and see what we can get done. But we thought it'd be fun just to do an episode from there so you all can hear about our adventures. But yeah, to catch you up, uh, we're moving. Uh, if you missed last week's episode. Are we moving? I recommend, this is like a sequel, you know, from now on, everything's like part two and part three and four. If you missed last week's episode, I recommend you stop right now and you go back and listen to it so we don't have you to You go from ourselves. the beginning, like 2020. Yeah, actually go back two years. Yeah, a hundred episodes ago, no. And you can hear the progression. Have of, we had a hundred episodes? Probably. They just w came and Someone went. Someone asked me the other day. I was on a podcast yesterday. Uh, my friend from college, he's a veterinarian. And uh, a podcast network reached out to him and thought he could do a very cool, like, retro style call. Like, Delilah is the vibe I got. Like, welcome to, I forget the name. I think it still has a working title. But you call in with questions about your pet's, you know, issues and mental health. But I had to act like I didn't know who he was. But, I mean, I had a real question about Wheezy. But it's like, he he's my friend from college. About Wheezy's so. mental health? Uh, yeah, yeah, her vaginal health, actually. Yeah. And so, no, so anyway, so it was really funny, but we got off the call and the podcast producers were like, you have a really nice speaking voice. That was really good. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, yeah, I don't know. No, I was like, yeah, I mean, I've done this for a long time. I would hope. I mean, that'd be like telling my friend Peter, wow, you're a good vet. He's been, do he's been a veterinarian and a radi veterinarian radiologist for like, what, 15 or 20 years now. So I would hope he's a good vet, you know? Yeah. But I like to be complimented in something, you know, but I think I, I'm complimented when, you know, they didn't know Baby, you that do I had a lot experience. of things right. But talking on the microphone, it's one of the most greatest things that you have. You're very eloquent. I was about to say you were, that was eloquently said. Thank you. So, yeah, we've obviously I've been through an emotional roller coaster since our last show, since you last heard from me. Uh, it feels a little postpartum vibes, to be quite honest. Like I've been laughing. I've been butterflies, excitement. I've been crying. Fran and I almost broken up. Um, we've had we've had some fights and some moments. I think it's just all very stressful, as you would anticipate, kind of. Making a decision to... Sell. One might stay in the States. One <laughs> might go to Mexico. No, I, we need to move before we break up because we're driving each other crazy in the States. And then we're both stuck having to co-parent in a city that neither of us really want to be in because that's what a lot of feedback I got to. Not a lot, but thank you, by the way, for all of the feedback and opinions. And, you know, I really only had one, not even negative opinion. And I know you listened to the show and you commented on social. I know a bunch of people kind of went after you on that. I, uh... No, I appreciate your opinion. I think it's, uh, I, all I can say is when people don't agree with our thought process or, you know, you kind of get people that'll say things going, moving's not going to fix your problems, you know? And I go, well, I don't consider myself unhappy here. I think it's more the kind of quality of life. And then she said, well, we achieved this by moving out into the country. And I think that's great. I think, um, but we want beach. There's just a lot of other elements that go into play here, you know? And, and we want to place an environment where, Remy can flourish, where Remy can evolve as a person, evolve in in his senses that can be surrounded by culture, by Simplicity different type too. of cultures. Which, hold on, I do want to say something though about say that it. because you say what can, you need to say. You can achieve this. I think it's really interesting to hear people's thoughts about this because I noticed that we have to be careful also in the way that we frame this moving because. And I, and I noticed this by speaking, I had a really good girlfriend text me yesterday who lives here and say, wow. So I just like got the word that you're moving, you know, and I don't know, she might've been maybe because I like didn't tell her directly, but even though this was kind of one of those things that you and I, it wasn't really meant to be an announcement. It's just kind of been this progression of a revelation that we've had. And, um, and, but it made me think, I go, I don't ever want anyone to feel like I'm bashing where we live. And I don't think that. You know, I think the kind of this thing that I've noticed, and I wish I could put it into the correct words that, hold on, 
that just because people make a life change doesn't mean, you know, especially when you speak to a friend that you know is very Dallas or DFW root. It has a lot of family here. Kids are in school here. I in no way am trying to say if you're happy here, that is what that's what you should be. You Clap know what hands. I'm saying? Like you should be happy wherever you are. I mean, I think life is a journey, of course, and there's challenges, but because I'm moving and saying that I'm not happy here is not a hate on the city that we live in. And I hope everyone is clear on that. Now, do I hate it sometimes? Yes. <laughs> but but no, I just mean, I think you have to be careful though, you know, because we do have a lot of reasons that we're moving that may feel like an insult, you know, but to someone I'm not that's bashing in any way, shape or form. I'm just saying that I want a better environment and that I, is not bashing. Like, I'm referencing it's a more better... when you and I talk kind of about school shootings here and not there, that it makes parents who have kids in school here feel defensive over it and understandably so but i you know what i you know what i'm saying yeah i am not even going there because i think we every country has its own problems but sure. and um i think the raffle of life can bring any other things i ran into a couple uh girlfriends that are a couple the other night and they were like this is so cool you're doing this she goes you know what we got home from a vacation we looked at each other and we went our mortgage is a lot and <laughs> And we just went on a vacation. It was a lot. And I think they were kind of having that same revelation, you know, and then they're in a, you know, they're, they're in a same sex relationship. So obviously they're feeling a lot of kind of anxiety and pressure. About, woman, woman, or guy, guy. I, if you had been listening to what I just said, you would have deduced that information. And, uh, so I'll let you go back and listen to the show for the answer to your, to your, your burning question. Okay. Just hit rewind. Cool. Now, so <laughs> hold on. So I was saying something. Okay. Cool. So you just stop and continue going. But but they said that they've kind of had that same revelation. She goes, I think you realize at some point every you think when you're in your twenties, everyone wants the same thing. It's the consumerism or, oh, I want this or I want to buy this house or do whatever. And then all of a sudden you kind of as your life changes and your chapters change and your priorities shift, you go, wait. <laughs> This is all a lot, which is great if it makes you happy, but is this where we want to be, you know, spending the money and where is making us most happy? And so, you know, she kind of said they had that same revelation. But uh, anyway, yeah, thank you for all this feedback because a lot of y'all have written me and not a single one of you have said don't do it, <laughs> which is supportive, but also like, wow, okay. Uh, not a single person. I mean, people have different perspectives, obviously, and play devil's <laughs> advocate, but not a single, I think people want to get rid of us. They're like, fucking no, go, babe, go, like, beat, so, it. Beat, like, beat it, beat it. Like, babe, who's going to tell you not to do it? I don't know. People have a lot of opinions. I can't even launch a redo of a new product, by the way, of a new bottle, a new formula without people going, I love you, but can you also redo this component of this product? Cause I hate it. And I go, if y'all love me, could you share that constructive criticism privately, not on a new ad for a new product where other people might be deterred from shopping. If it's, you know, people will be like, I say this with love cause I love you. And I know they mean it, but they will bash a product a different product than the one I'm promoting on an advertisement for a new product. And I go, if you love someone as a business owner, do not criticize their brand publicly. Send me a DM and tell me your issue. And I promise you, we will work on fixing that if a lot of people feel the same way. But can we not, like I'm celebrating a new product. Can we not? So yes, a lot of people will So that's why people don't tell you that not to, move? to move. Yes, a lot of people will give you their honest opinion. Have you not learned that on our, especially on my social media? People are very honest. Yeah. <laughs> Whether I like it or not, you know? Uh, so it's so funny though, y'all, because I want to take you behind the scenes for a moment on what has transpired since we kind of made this announcement. I of course made a TikTok and an Instagram, just like a get ready talking about this. I mean, I could go on and on about all the different facets and reasons, but uh, Fran and my mom have both, you know, this has been everyone's on their own emotional journey with what's going on right now with kind of our responsibilities and everything that has to take place. Because of course, you know, Fran and I have had a lot of nice one-on-one -on -one moments of the cars and, you know, the real logistical stuff that I think a lot of you are interested in. We'll get into that another time because a lot of you are writing me about, you know, visas and taxes and transportation. So I think it'll be really nice once we go through it. If you're interested, we'll do some YouTube videos and we'll talk about it. But but my mom and Fran turned to me and they go, my mom text a photo of all the snakes that live in Baja. Just, you know, I may not tell you exactly where we decide to move. You'll be able to deduce it. But until we make that decision, yes, we're looking at Baja right now. But she says, look at all the snakes that live in Baja. And then Fran goes, 
I, I continue to realize just how much he hates snakes. He goes, oh, do you think there's a lot of snakes? And then Bo's friend and my mom get on this whole tangent of, you think there's scorpions? What the fuck do y'all think lives in a desert? And especially in a mildly undeveloped, you know, in this cross of being developed where they're just like tearing down stuff or like digging up desert to build houses. Like we're disrupting everything that lives there in their homes. I'm sure there's things scarier than snakes and scorpions. Yeah, we. What? We. Weed. Yeah, we, we, us. Us. Who says we like in that way? Is that how you do it in Spanish? Is this a Spanish lesson? Oh, fucking, Us. yes. Wouldn't that be like saying like nosotros? Nosotros. We're the scariest ones we. in the hall. <laughs> nosotros. <laughs> what is us in Spanish? Nosotros. What is we? Nosotros. Oh, damn. Okay. So that, that works for me. This is great. I can't wait to take you. I hope people find it interesting. I decided I'm going to have a Spanish tutor it's an all women's Spanish school. If we decide to move there, they do lessons like in person or in gr small groups or they'll come to you. But I think I'm going to have, have someone go with me to the market and like put me in conversational moments and teach me that way. I think it'd be a really nice way to learn. Y'all are going to just be easy on me with the Spanish. Cause I'm really going to go out and make the effort. I'm very, I'm very excited to see that happening. Um, to talk to you in Spanish, you know, I was, having lunch the other day with a really good friend of mine that I know for the past 20 years in Austin. And he was so, in such a shock. Just a side note. He's like, because you call, I answer the phone. And he's like, do you speak to your wife in English all the time? He's like, no, I speak in Spanish when I don't want her to know what the fuck I'm talking about. But yes, like, Man, how much you respect me behind my back. Thank you so all of y'all can hear that, you right? You see, like, no. she turns everything around. I'm just talking about Turn the fact... Turn everything around? I was just kidding about the fact that I talk in Spanish when I don't want you to know but something. But he was criticizing but no, that I don't speak Spanish? He wasn't criticizing. He was saying, like, he, f for him, as Mexican, with a Mexican wife, it was in shock that I speak something but my native language... What he doesn't understand is that I've been living here for almost 20 years and English is mm. pretty much my native language. Oh, like at he this thought point. English was more challenging for you than it is. No, he thought that it was like he just found it really amusing that we speak in English, like we only speak English. Does he want us to speak in tongues? Like, how, what else would I speak? Spanish. So he's like, for him, in, and in, in his way to having a relationship, with his Mexican wife, he's like, how how do you totally communicate? How do you argue? I was like, oh, we, we, we're very good at it. I've never talked bad about you or anything. I don't know why you say how I bashed you on your back, behind your back. No, I was, you said whatever you just said. I was just going along with it because you were just like, no, I only speak in Spanish when I don't want her to understand. I was like, I know you were joking. I was just kidding. So... Yeah, so it was like, and it dawned on me, like, it's like, wow, can you imagine how amazing it would be to speak to your loved one in Spanish? Like, all the all the beautiful things I can tell. Don't make me feel insecure about it, because I was insecure. How am I making you feel insecure about it? Like, what relax. did I say wrong? I'm telling you, relax. What is going on with you right now? Too much coffee. Jesus. Did you no like much snort breakfast. coke before the podcast? Like, you're geeking no. out. No. I am. Um, no. What you know, you'd be like <laughs> folded over in half. What's happening? I know. I just mean, I used to ask you that. I think as a, someone that you don't understand the perspective and maybe you can remember when you were a teenager of the person that when we first started dating, I always ask you why you always feel, I think when you, and I'm sure a lot of people that have, you know, relationships feel the same way. Like when someone speaks another language as their native language and you don't speak it at all, you do feel a little, you feel insecure already about, you know, would he rather be with a woman that spoke that language? And I used to ask you that all the time. Like, why aren't you dating? Why did you ever date a Mexican girl? Like, why aren't you dating? Or just, you know, um, someone fluent in Spanish or, and, and you were, I don't know what you said to that. Like, do you prefer, you always kind of told me you liked blonde American girls, which I do not meet that criteria to 50%. Babe. But no, I was I just always saying, you're not making told me feel insecure. I equal was just opportunity. Like, <laughs> yeah. Tall, in short, blonde, brown. Yeah. I mean, no. real estate. I have to accept all races, all sizes. Uh, so I, uh, 
No, I'm looking forward to the challenge for me because I've struggled with the bandwidth of learning. And I know a lot of people have said, you have to learn Spanish. And I, I get it, y'all. It's not that I don't want to learn Spanish. And it's not that I'm making excuses because I do believe we all make time for the things we want to do. I truly haven't had the consistent time. And Francisco and I together also, we've gone through phases. But I truly believe that it's really hard as an adult to learn a language if you're not doing it, if you're not, you know, really doing it every day. Right. Like if I'm just kind of taking an hour lesson once a week and I'm not practicing it and utilizing it, I'm just I don't have the the storage space up here for it quite as much as Remy. But we have so much more to fill you in on. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and hear from some of the sponsors of the Fittish, Fittish podcast. We'll be right back while we were on that commercial break. Welcome back, Fran. I told Fran to buy a lottery ticket. You know, they have the app now that you can buy a lottery ticket. This is we're not advertising for the lottery. Don't spend money you don't have on a lottery ticket. Uh don't but spend money at all. Don't spend money at all, y'all. Yeah. I saw some like Instagram the other day, some financial advisor, what's her name, Mel Robbins or something. She's like, stop spending your money on stupid shit you don't need. And it's like, that's all you need to hear. She's like, everyone, because you convince yourself, like, I need this new thing. I need this new thing. And even with Remy, like I opened up an Amazon box today, which is something I am going to miss. And I got him like, you know, cheap little water shoes and knockoff Crocs, like, because he doesn't have shoes that fit because they grow so damn fast and a little linen like set to wear on the beach. And I got him, he wanted your motorcycle gloves so bad. He's been wearing friends' motorcycle, motorcycle glove, glove to sleep. This one glove, like a Skeletor glove. And so what I wanted to get him a smaller one, it has light up fingers. And so he put it on. He's so excited. And I'm just going, you know what? Yeah, he doesn't need, I've gotten better. I mean, we don't order him stuff all the time and the clothes are one thing because he needs some stuff that fits. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it is going to be a different lifestyle. I'm trying to think, what do you think I'm going to, if we really make this move and we're kind of living on a dirt road <laughs> no, and we're far from civilization? No. What do you think just with- a When nobody can hear you scream. I know. I'm not going to be able to watch. First of all, y'all, there's no way I'm going to be able to watch horror movies anymore. I'm finally going to cross the threshold where I don't think, I don't know. Maybe I will because I do love horror movies, but I mean, then again, our neighborhood's like scarier than maybe a, you know, middle of nowhere in Mexico. Not a lot of serial killers in the Baja. Like, I don't think they I've retired ever there. been in a place where someone is getting shot like no more than 10 blocks away from us. And we're living in a nice area. Like I'm not like, but. Oh yeah, there's been, we hear it. Isn't it's that crazy? crazy? I mean, I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way if you live, you know, whether you're in the DFW area or, you know, you're, you're listening, you live in San Antonio or New Orleans. I don't know how it is, but it is, it is interesting how much you're like, you know, a few years back, I remember going, I lived in uptown Dallas. I'm like, was that a gunshot? You know, sometimes when you hear the like engine sputter or whatever. And, but then once you hear it and then you get on the next door app or you get on Twitter and it's like confirmation that it was, or then, you know, uh, then you kind of know what it sounds like. And then you go, you realize how much you are hearing stuff like that happen, which is pretty wild. No, I want to ask you, what do you think? Just prediction now, and then we can confirm this at some point when, once we've moved. What do you think I'm going to struggle with the most? One thing. <laughs> no, you can, you, can, you can list a plethora of things. What do you think I'm going to no. struggle with the most? Um, I think I'm really not sure because... You're really humbody. I think what you're going to struggle the most is the little things that you're used to, which I'm pretty sure they're very achievable because we do have Amazon in Mexico and stuff like that. But I think that rapidness of getting a package, like yeah. I think there is many services and there is Amazon and there there is Amazon Prime anywhere we go. But for certain, I can tell you there is no overnight shipping, you know? The same day? No. I see that Amazon truck bumping down the dirt road and I'm outside celebrating, sharing with y'all like, she's here. Yeah, once yeah. every six months, it comes <laughs> and drop off like a whole fucking truck. I'm, I've been living my life in the last week, just so you know. Every, no, everything that I do, I've been thinking, can I do this? Will I miss this? You know, and I think there's certain things. Obviously, I know there's going to be things. I, I do worry a bit about... Um, hot water, you know, like, cause I definitely know water gets trucked in. You have to be good with water. But I think this gets back to that mindset of consumerism that, 
it is going to be a real challenge in the beginning. And I know I don't want you all listening to this going, Jenna, Mexico is not so third world. But I think, you know, when it's an area that's still underdeveloped, there are a lot of elements of that, you know, with, you know, there's no heat in a lot of the houses, but granted the weather is perfect. So, you know, a lot of them don't have AC either, but we'll have AC, but you, you know, you get it. Um, I want though, I mean, I think that is important. I don't need as much stuff. I am really been looking at packing up the house going, at what point in time did we all agree that having a lot of things is what we needed? You know, multiple sets of dishes and some of them are chipped and all these coffee mugs and so many dishes to clean and so many towels to wash. And um, and I'm sure some of you have solved, I'm not saying moving to Mexico solves that problem, but I think it sounds really nice to take a break for a bit and really go, how much do we really need? And could the house stay cleaner having less things, you know, and less cookware and less all of those things that kind of grind me out every day with, you know, 10 loads of laundry. And uh, anyway, yeah, I'm, I think we're all going to have our own challenges. I find, I find, yeah, I think the convenience of things at first and trying to pre-plan, I think the lack of food, it's going to challenge me a lot to cook because I don't like to cook, but I want to learn how to cook more. And it does take time and it's more ritualistic. And I'm going to struggle with that because I don't enjoy it. And I want to, I want to start enjoying it and figuring out, or I'm just going to like stock up at the Sam's or the, the Costco and have to have a lot of like frozen, frozen unhealthy food on standby when I don't feel like cooking and I need to cook one night, but we're not going to be able to just lay in bed at 10 o'clock at night and like Uber eats I think we're going to eat fresher. Fresher. Right. And I ask you the same question. What do you think I'm going to struggle the most? I worry for you because like you said, I am a homebody and a lot of people fear that I'd be lonely, but y'all don't understand. I hardly leave the house as it is. And when I do crave interaction, you know, a simple trip to a coffee shop or a market or to the beach and like a conversation with a stranger, like totally suffices for me. I worry. I think you've had a nice transition, but you are much more of a social butterfly. I think you can achieve it, but I worry that you'll feel bored and lonely. I mean, yeah, bored and lonely and want to, you know, that you're going to be wanting to like trek into busier towns more to, you know, hang out with people. I think I'm going to buy a little plane. I'm sorry. Come again. Different conversation, you know, different time, different subject, different podcast. Different. Not the one next one, no the other one. Different wife. No, I cannot, I cannot have that conversation right now. Please don't do that to me right now. Not yet. I said, babe, chillax. What does that have anything to do with what you're going to struggle with the most? Why are you just so EDD that you're like, I'm going to buy a plane? Like Because I will struggle with distance between the points of business that I have. So that would be... an hour. And you, where, where we're talking Austin, about living. Dallas. Uh, so... Just, hey, babe, I'm going to be in Dallas. I'll be home in the next two hours. It's going to be the new Austin drive. So I changed my answer. Anyhow. I am going to struggle most with being a single mom when Fran crashes his electric cyber truck plane or whatever he decides to get with a limited pilot's license he acquired in a beach town in Mexico. I am going to struggle being a single no, mom. No, there is a school that gives you a scuba, a scuba license and a pilot license in the same <laughs> I week. Can't. I y'all, I recognize panic attacks and I am having shortness of breath right now. I'm going to need to start medicating, but in about an hour, I have a presentation for QVC to pitch my brand for QVC. I, you need to not go there right now because I am not, I know I've been having waves of shortness of breath and I know I'm no. <laughs> but don't worry. It has a parachute. That's safe. You know, when you tell your significant other what buttons not to push and then they continue to do it, and that's what's happening right now. No, really, I'm getting like. Well, if I'm like a three years stop. old in an elevator. Just... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the land vehicles that we're going to buy. <laughs> no, hold on. <laughs> I said to Fran, y'all know me so well. Okay, I know. We've had all these conversations, but I want to talk a bit about Remy. So Trade one motorcycle for our jet ski. I went to lunch with a really great girlfriend of mine yesterday. She's so great. And um, and she just wanted to talk to me about this because she's kind of known my train of thought for a while. And, you know, I, I, I felt I was able to share with her. You know, I could kind of like tear up, cry about it a bit and talk about my fears. And, uh, and so, and I've worked through it, but I said to her and I, she started crying laughing when I told her this, but I go, I'm a little worried. You know, I think more, I'm just such a worrier, right? Becoming a parent, like let's talk about Remy. I think he'd thrive, but obviously I worry about things like if he breaks his leg, we know how awful it would be to have to, 
like get on a dirt road with an injury and get him somewhere and how painful that would be and traumatic. I mean, it'd be painful regardless of when your kid breaks their leg in a car, but like you do have to consider these things and they do have a hospital where we want to live. There's a really good hospital an hour away. And, um, you know, but I think about all of this stuff and I know that it sounds, and I think we're going to get the lay of the land a bit more. Uh, like I said, when we go next week and you'll be listening to the show there, but, uh, I've been following all these accounts from the town that we want to live and the town posted that they're having a a match fundraiser because where we want to go, there's a lot of musicians and artists and, you know, people that have second homes here. So they were like doing this match thing where they're willing to match the donations raised to buy, to buy, to buy a new ambulance, like to buy one new ambulance. And I went, Oh, Oh, and I said to Fran, I go, we're not, we hear ambulances every night. Like we're not going to hear, am- <laughs> well, certainly not if they're looking to get a new one. We're not going to hear ambulances like ever, which is nice and peaceful because every time you hear an ambulance, I, at least as a mom, now I worry about what's happening and who's dying and what's going on. But I guess, you know, kids grow up in a lot of places in the world. And, you know, it's such an ignorant American kind of comment of me to be like, uh, like, yes, kids grow up in nature. Kids grow up without being a j- five minute drive like we are right now to the hospital. Granted, that has come into handy. So I think we'll just deal with it. You know, if it's stitches and a broken bone, I mean, this happens to kids and we'll just deal with it and we'll be OK. But obviously, yeah, I mean, there are some things there to consider uh, about the town maybe being in need of an ambulance. We'll figure it out. We'll cross that bridge. But <clears throat> we have. So what about what I told you? Talk about the cars and what I told you I wanted to put. Tell everyone what I said, because this is going to surprise not a single one of you listening when we talk about putting stuff in storage. But there is one item, just to ruin the surprise, there is one item that I want to purchase to bring. And I told Fran if he's going to get a trailer for one of our cars and we're going to put, oh. you know, um, tires in. No, 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 don't do it. I turned to Fran the other night. Tell him. She wants me to bring her. Holiday decorations. That's the way you're going to deliver that? I just let you tell the story and that's how you tell it? it, It's like you need to bring this seven million Uh, feet tall skeleton. Can y'all envision the 12 foot Home Depot skeleton set up in the desert outside of where we live? How beautiful and amazing. She thinks that we're bringing an 18 fucking wheeler. It's not an 18 wheeler. If anyone has a 12-foot skeleton they're willing to let me buy from you um, because it's not really in season right now. Send it to Baja. I asked him if he would call the Home Depot that ex- that that exists down there in the area we want to move. I asked him if he would call the Home Depot and just ask if they got any shipments last year or if they're planning on getting shipments this year. So then you don't have to bring it. Fran is going to make the drive in one of our cars because we're allowed to bring cars, um, which in other states in Mexico you're not. And we're allowed to bring cars. And so I asked Fran if... Um, he, he wants to drive and he's like, can I bring Remy? I'm like, just let me fly with Remy because it's a super long drive. I go, I was like, how long is it actually? He goes 17 hours from the border of California and Mexico. 17 hours from there is how far it is. So imagine that drive, which he's just giddy with excitement. You love a long drive. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Absolutely not. Yeah, you just put your audiobooks, you just get chilled, like get shit done while the car drives itself, you know? I would only do that drive if the world is ending and we have to get in the car and drive for, I don't care how long, but like, I do not want to do that drive. Oh, that's one well, different subject, but we're just going to touch about anything that we are going to purchase in the future. What? Nothing, baby. There, there's no need to talk about anything. Jump ahead of ourselves. Can y'all with anything. See, I know y'all think we're crazy, huh? No, we're excited about it. But of course, you understand it's a lot of conversation. It's a lot of logistics to work through. It's just a lot of a lot. So I'm feeling more excited. Um, but I do want to say to you, I had recorded a TikTok where I'm crying hysterically, and I don't know if I'll ever share it. I'm going to document this because I think it's. A, I think we watch a lot of videos of people do things like this, and then you see. What were you crying hysterically? I'm going to cry if I start talking about it right because <laughs> because I think you. I think it's a lot of emotion to think that sometimes you turn around in your life and you look around and you go, you have that realization, which I know is a beautiful thing to have that realization, but you go. What if everything I ever thought I ever wanted 10 years ago or whatever just isn't what I thought? And I think it's a nice reality, but I think just it, I worked really hard to find a house. It was like house hunting was so difficult and I didn't even get the house decorated and unpacked. And, 
you worry, what if we hate it? And I get it. I mean, I'm through it. We'll move back. You know, we'll find another place. We'll find another house, you know, but I, I think the point is you, we follow these people online. I follow this couple that moved to Mallorca with two kids and it's so beautiful. You know, you're just, she's like, I've never been happier. I moved from the States. I'm here. There's so much that goes on in between that I want to document and share at some point because we see this version of non-reality on the internet that is like, I left everything behind and moved and I've never been happier. And I think there's a lot of in between there and I want to be honest about it. I think I'm going to end up like having a m mental breakdown. I'm going to get pulled over by the federales. I'm going to have no idea where I am. My phone's not going to be working because my maps aren't going to be working because I just got busy and didn't download it. You know, I know all of these things and they're going to take my license because I don't have a Mexican driver's license and I'm going to have to go, you know, like wait until I call you. I'm going to have those challenges and I'm going to cry and I'm going to, cry in the middle of a farmer's market because I still haven't learned my Spanish or, you know, I'm going to be frustrated with myself. I think I'm just going to have a lot of challenging moments that I'm going to get through, but I just hope that people know that this isn't an easy decision that I've never been hundred percent about big decisions in my life. My business, leaving the radio show, I was never hundred percent certain. And I think it's important to share that with people because it's not all just like we sold it all and we're here and everything's like roses, you know? And so that's why. That's why I feel emotional that I'm making the right decision for Remy. I get scared that I'm going to move him somewhere and and feel that I, you know, it's not best for him or something. So anyway. I think it's the best way to teach him. And I, I absolutely and understand what you're coming from and all the emotions. I think it's the best way to show him resilience. It's the, way, the best way to show him that the only constant is change and that we can work through it. And let's end with Remy the other day. I think he knew that I had been a little upset because they feel that I wasn't crying like in front of him or anything, but I think he could see my mood and he probably knew our energy that day. We were stressed. He came up to me and got almost nose to nose and was like, are you okay? <laughs> I was like, well, I mean, your papa and I are like at each other's throats and I'm, you know, about to start my period and I'm really emotional well, that, I'm about, that, that, I, that I'm about to move that I'm about to move our whole family and sell our home and all of our belongings and move you to a desert town. And I looked at him and I said, mommy's great. How are you? <laughs> and he goes and better help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, thanks for following us on this journey. We'll have so much more to fill you in on. I'm sure we may get to you next week and go, this isn't it. So, uh, you know, backup plan number two. So I hope you join us next week. We'll catch you next week. Bye.